Today, I'm interviewing Bushra Azhar from the Persuasion Revolution. It is not G-rated. It's PG-13, possibly R. So if you have little ones around, you might want a headset or you might want to save this for later. And tune in and listen to all her goodness. Hey everybody, it's Sylvie from sylviemccracken.com and today I have a really special guest with me, Bushra Azhar from thepersuasionrevolution.com and also the Persuasion Show on iTunes. Hey Bushra, thank you for being here today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. Finally, we got to meet behind yeah. the screen as well. We have met in person for once I've met someone in person so for sure so yeah Bushra and I met in person in Dubai actually when I was living there and Bushra lives in Saudi Arabia so she came to Dubai for a visit and I was glad I was able to stalk her and track her down and have lunch with her it was a great great time so Bushra is a persuasion strategist which is what exactly how would you explain persuasion strategy so um thank you for that question so uh, <clears throat> So when I started uh, this whole online thing, um, one of the things that I wanted to do, because that was something that I was still doing, you know, I was, I was working in consulting and that was something that I was doing anyway. You know, we would go for, we would go for pitches, we would go to, you know, law contracts and kind of having a grip on how you want to persuade, how to plan your pitches, how to build arguments, how to negotiate was something that I did anyway. And I was really interested in the topic and I did, you know, I read a ton of books, about 307 books by last count. So I read a ton of books on this. And the idea really in my head was um, every time you go for a pitch, you should come back with a yes. There is no, you know, and we used to lock up, you know, million dollar contracts. So when I started dabbling into online business, I thought, okay, so that's an offline skill that I can actually take online. But everywhere I looked, there are people who were doing it, but they were mostly doing it under the umbrella of copywriting. Whereas mm -hmm. what I teach is a, a, a lot more than just copywriting. Because for me, the way I describe persuasion and the way I teach persuasion kind of ties into the whole idea of being non-icky persuasion is that people think that persuasion is something that one person does to the other, right? That's what you think. Oh, you persuaded me into something. Oh, yeah, you know, I didn't want to. sleazy just by definition. Exactly. It almost sounds just like, wait, by definition, you making me do something that I didn't want to do already? Exactly, what is exactly. Are you forcing and me? Are you forcing me? Are you, you know, are you do, do, playing some mind games to get me to say yeah. yes, right? This is how we see persuasion. So really the way I describe persuasion, honestly, is that persuasion is not something that one person does to the other person. Persuasion really is what one person does to herself in response to a stimulus that you expose them to. So your control only extends to the point where you expose them to, to the right stimulus. You cannot force anyone to do anything. We, no one can force anyone to do anything. But what you have in your hand, what you have control over is what stimulus do you expose them to. And really what I teach is exposing people to the right stimulus. So not only do you get a yes, it is also a yes that comes with delight. It's not a yes that comes with, uh, you know, because right. the problem with those forced yeses is that you may get it now, but then three months down the road or six months down the road or even a month or even the next week, you, you're hit by something called buyer's remorse. Yeah. Which means that the person will come back and say, you know what, I'm sorry, I made this decision. I didn't want to make this decision. And that happens a lot. Yeah. And I was just ranting about this in a group, uh, in my group yesterday, about this, this whole idea of people not being ready for your products or services, then, but others telling them, you know, you should buy because this is just resistance. Mm -hmm. You know, you're resisting it because you have some sort of a, some sort of a block or some sort of a money block. But the reality is sometimes the person is resisting because they're not really ready. And we need to know how far we can go, what stimulus can we expose them to in order to get a happy, delighted yes. Yeah, well, I like that because I feel like, you know, I mean, and here's the thing, like I am, you know, I consider Bushra not only a friend, but I'm also a client of, I'm in EPS, which is... Remind me what it is, what it's called, what it stands persuasion for. Sequence. Email persuasion sequence and also PH Lab, Persuasion Hackers Lab. So I'm a customer of, of Bushra's more than once over. And in those groups with your clients, I mean, you've got those, you know, like you said, I mean, those people are happy to be there. They are ride or die, you know, they are, they, they gave you a yes. And they are, you know, three years later, they're ecstatic that they gave you that yes. What I love is that, you know, here's the thing with, with this kind of, with this uh, technique or this skill, persuasion, 
it can be used for good or evil, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So when you're good at this, I mean, you know, that, that's sort of knowing the line, right? So knowing what, you know, believing in your service, knowing that it has results, and also knowing uh, up until when and how can you uh, help people make the best decision for them if it's right for them at the right time, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Because it's really easy, like you said, once you know how it works, it's really easy for you to cross that line. You know what makes people tick, right? Mm -hmm. When you've been in business, and it's not like some secret formula. When you've been in business long, you understand your audience, you know <clears throat> what kind of phrases, what kind of offers, what kind of positioning pushes them over the edge, right? right? You know how to get people to buy. Now, there's nothing wrong with using those skills, but you need to be doing it from a position of compassion and understand that if someone is not ready, then they are not ready. It could be, you know, I hear this a lot where people say, oh, money is never an object. Um, mm -hmm. Money, you know, people don't say uh, no because of money issues. Money is never an issue. Money is an issue. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And just this message that is so prevalent in online business right now, this whole idea of money is not an issue, put it on your credit card. Um, someone actually had a coach that told her, uh, where would you get the money if your kid was sick? Oh God. <laughs> I freaking lost my shit. Can you, I'm like, I would spend my own money, travel to your country and bash your ass in person. Oh my God. Like that. Yeah, that's, that's really bad. It's unbelievable. The kind of thing people see. I received an email from someone and one of the line in the email was like, uh, if you don't buy this, if you don't invest in this or something, uh, you will regret it on your deathbed. And I was like, what? Yeah, I that's... will not be thinking about you or your shitty program when I'm about to die. Trust <laughs> me, I have a lot of other shitty things to worry about. I've done a lot of crappy stuff in my life. I'll worry about those. I'm not going to worry about not investing in your program. Totally. But, but people totally. use these lines because they know these lines work on certain people, but they do it without remorse. They do it without worrying about what that does to the other person. So right. and not really com this is not really persuasion, but this is more, I would say this is more compassion business, compassionate business, which is something that you stand for, right? Yeah. Value-based business, compassionate business. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, and you know, I probably spend an inordinate amount of time or my team does a lot of the times telling people not to join my course, you know, <laughs> I mean, I do have a, I, on my sales pages, I do a who it's right for, who it's not right for and I still yeah. have the people that fall into the who it's not right for emailing us saying look I don't I don't have this this and this which you recommend before joining should I still join I'm like no <laughs> exactly what I said on the sales page you shouldn't because you're not going to get results and you know I, I'm not here for you to just give me the money for the fun of it so um, that's just not what we're doing so in terms of like so backtracking a bit for people that might not have you know met you online already t tell us about that transition you were working like a maniac full-time in your day job back, you know, two years ago, or whatever, you know, however long it was, and you were building your business. No, like if you combine both two, I think maniac is the correct word. You were, <laughs> you were working more than Gary V. Uh, tell people how you, how you did it, kind of how you, how you started this business in your, as your side hustle and grew it to, um, you know, to replace your day job and how you transitioned, how you, how you made the leap. So, um, I'm going to go back to the word maniac because <laughs> you lived in the Middle East. You know, there is no one in the Middle East <laughs> even remotely like a maniac. So, right, right. so, so okay, I think, okay. I think, okay, so you kind of, no, you know. But, but I've seen you in person too. And you're, you're a hustler, man. You talk fast, you walk fast, you, yeah, you but, get stuff done, right? You, yeah, you move okay. quickly. Yeah, okay. So, okay, I do get work done. And the, the, when I started this, I think the only reason it grew so quickly because I gave myself a really tight deadline. So that was March, April of 2014. And I gave myself three months and I said, okay, if in three months something happens, uh, the business business takes off, great. Uh, if it doesn't, I'll just forget about it and never think of starting a wow, business ever again. That's hardcore. Um, so, so this was how, so, so what I did was the very first thing that I did was because it was really hardcore was that I pretended I was ill and I basically <clears throat> took sick leave from <laughs> the office. <cheater. laughs> see, that's the thing. I'm a cheater because see, I only have limited hour, limited, right. um, uh, days of you know vacation and I need to travel back home I can't just take a vacation to build business so I just had to pretend to be sick which incidentally uh, interestingly I became sick for real which was not part of the plan you manifested anyway, a sickness so, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was like I was like you know you would have just taken a regular leave I was like no no I'm saving my vacation days anyway but you know that's how crappy things right. are when you are in, in the night five but 
so um so i gave myself 3 months i was like okay i'm going to start um uh so so it was april may i kind of goofed around a bit june mid may to june was when i you know was like okay i'm going to you know i'm going to do something i'm going to put together a website and then i didn't want to spend any money on this on my business because i you know i just i it's a, it was a test it was a bet with myself so i put together my entire website on my own everything i used mailchimp it was crazy um and then july 2014 was really when i kind of opened the doors in the sense that i started guest blogging i started getting traffic but you were not and selling anything you were just growing i don't know i was i didn't have anything to sell yeah. so it was interesting because one of my guest posts uh, on copy hackers it went it, it it did so well that i got my first client from that from the guest post so someone read the guest post and she emailed me she got on my list and then she emailed me and she said i'm looking for your services page and i want to work with you and i don't see it i was like what services page i don't have a services page <laughs> i was like okay i don't even have a paypal account i don't even know how to receive the dang money so amazing okay so overnight i was like okay put something together put so oh, what do people charge i don't even know what people charge for something like this so um Amazing. that was interesting i made my first 500 dollars i i did a shit ton of work for her right. 500 dollars because it was unbelievable for yep. me that someone from the internet they don't know you they have not seen you and they're willing to send you money so so that's how the first client happened so july august september i was only working one on one with people i that did a ton of free work which is something that people they they think it's beneath them and there are a lot of people who say oh you shouldn't be selling out your work for free i did three website reviews for 100 people in 3 weeks because Amazing. i wanted to build my credibility i wanted to be in a position where i could say you know i have these testimonials this is my before after and i mm-hmm. could do it if i if no one knew me right 100% um so from july to october this is what happened um in october i launched my first uh, program it was a 47 dollar program really simple i launched it in collaboration with someone and then since then i am kind of a crazy person i almost launch something probably every month every other month Incre- so i kind of built a portfolio of products over the last 2 years yeah you i mean and you're really quick you're quick with launching them and and you know you're quick with selling them out as well which is incredible <clears throat> yeah because i sell them first and i build them later because that's kind of my approach so right. the the focus before i sell it the my entire focus is on selling it right and what sold it then my entire focus is on building it and giving it a great experience because i don't know i, I know i know there are people who build it and then they sell yeah. it but i work best on deadline so for me that works right best. and once you have you know a group of people that have paid you money and are waiting for it the motivation and the 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 lack of time excuses go away right because you the motivation is there you have a fire under your butt you have something to deliver you have a due date now yeah but then you shouldn't wait till the last minute because i did once and then my computer crashed and it was oh. not the best thing yeah i bet yeah, that was a story too So a lot of people uh watching are probably not um you know not selling high price programs yet but they're selling something like an ebook or they're selling you know via their newsletters or with a sales page. Are there any quick tips that you can give in order to kind of sell that non-sleazy way using persuasion using it for a beginner who doesn't really understand the concept of persuasion or in depth but wants to kind of improve and improve conversions on a sales page improve conversions on an email copy what would you suggest So uh most of my programs are I I don't believe in only selling premium so my mm-hmm. first uh My first product is forty-seven dollars. I still have products there for twenty-five dollars. I am a firm believer in casting a wider net, of selling a lot of entry-level products and kind of building your tribe, as people call it. But I would call it—I call it my my one thousand true fans. using those um those low ticket items so i am a huge fan of those mm-hmm. and uh even though um a lot of people say and i see that a lot on online where you know how you have a 27 dollar product or a 9 dollar ebook and the 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 sales page is a freaking nightmare it's so freaking long and i'm like okay what where do i stop it's a really long sales page mm-hmm. and um i'm sure there are benefits to having that kind of sales page but the way i see a sales page no matter what you're selling the way i see a sales page is it's like um you know it's like a building and when you put elements on a sales page they are like building blocks for an argument you're building an argument for a particular thing and then every piece that goes on to that sales page has to 
contribute to building that argument. That means that the order of the sales page is important as well as the contents of the sales page. But for a low ticket item, especially something like an ebook, a few things that I, I think are super important. And unfortunately, even in those 20 pages of sales page, I don't see enough of that. And that is what I like to call, um, you know, I have a name for that principle and I say contrast is the new black. So the idea behind contrast is the new black that no matter what you're selling, no matter what industry you're in, no matter what you're selling, I don't care what you're selling, you're always competing against something. And even if you're not competing against a certain competitor, you're still competing against a no. So you just don't think that just because you have a $9 or $11 or a $19 product, the person the sale is going to be easy because even though there may not be other competitors, you are still competing against a no. The person has the option to close the browser, delete your email and move on and not basically give you their money. So my biggest advice on this is whether on sales pages or on, on emails is to do a, what I like to call a parity switch. So basically show them how this is different from the other options, from the other substitutes. So on sold out launch, which I just launched in July, in June, um, actually I had it on the sales page. I had a table on the sales page that said, this is sold out launch, this is other launch programs, like we used to do in high school, right? You do a, a compare and contrast. Do mm -hmm. this compare and contrast in your email, on your sales page, because See, the person who's reading that sales page, she's doing the comparison in her head anyway. She's looking at your course and thinking, why can't I just Google this information? Why right. can't I just get this from Wikipedia, right? She's already doing this comparison in her head. Now, your job is to facilitate that comparison because if she does that comparison on her own, she may arrive at a conclusion that will not be favorable to you, that may not be favorable to you. But if you facilitate that comparison, if you do that comparison for her, why can why can't I, and it could simply be as you know why can't you just i would if i had an ebook on something and there is no other competitor i would actually just put it why can't i google this you know my ebook versus wikipedia or google this is to the extent how how wow. obvious you need to make it because people are doing this comparison in their heads anyway and yeah actually don't... we get emails saying sometimes you know is this is, does this ebook contain this more different? than is on your site already yeah 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 exactly how is this different from why should i be paying for this uh how is this different from uh, when i launched sold out launch even though i had that table on my sales page even though i had it there i still had people email me oh because there are a lot of uh, launch programs out there and this is especially important in an in an area where there is a lot of noise, where there are a lot of other programs. So launch programs, I know there are a dime a dozen. There are so many launch programs and across the board, the pricing. So, uh, and mine incidentally was expensive than all the others. Yes, it had different things, but it was more expensive than all the other launch programs. And I used to get those emails. How is this different from this? How is this different from this? Despite the fact that I had the table. So, Absolutely. The, the, keep, the, keep this in mind. You're always competing against someone or something. And if you're not competing against anyone, you're still competing against a no. Yeah. So you need to kind of draw that comparison. And overcoming That's, those objections, right? In the sales overcoming page. Overcoming those objections. Overcoming those objections on the sales page. But I think just this comparison table, if you decide to do it or in an email or whatever, just doing it because we, you know, there are people who are visual learners. When they yeah. see, they already have those questions in their heads. But when they see the questions that are in their head, when they see it on the screen, they're like, oh my God, she gets me, right? Yeah. You want that response. Oh my God, she gets me. She understands me. So, yeah. so that's why I really think the contrast principle has to be established, has to be addressed in our sales conversations. Yeah. And what I love about your style too, is that you bring in, well, humor for me is really important. I feel like, you know, like we didn't get into this, into our own businesses to have this like buttoned up, you know, corporate stuffiness. Right. So yes. I mean, that's the thing is like the cool thing is you can still in, interject your personality and your humor into the subject lines or like, you know, you, I mean, you bring up things like you bring up examples, like using, like selling your used pantyhoses on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I love about Bushra is if you listen into her podcast or, you know, you're on her email list. I mean, the emails, you're going to open them just because you're like, what the hell is she talking about? Um, so, so yeah, so I love that, you know, your approach is not this, like, here is the template and you have to follow A, B and C, you know, and, and I'm falling like, asleep. I have, uh, Salbi, yeah. Salbi has, 
I've had enough, I think not just Saudi, corporate yeah. culture in general. Yeah. I think it's the same everywhere because Saudi, but Saudi is extraordinarily um, conservative, but right. I think the corporate culture is the same everywhere. I think I've done enough of those. So yeah. I'm like, done. I'm almost 40. Come on. Yeah. When am I going to swear? It's yeah. now the time. I'm ready. <laughs> it's a great filter. People are in or out on your email list. Yes. You know, yes. You're either in or you're out. Yeah. And it's a funny story to this because uh, someone I met on sh- in Canada, so I was at, there at an event, there had about 100 people. And then there was this one girl uh, who was a roommate with one of my first clients. And my client, she came all the way from Amsterdam just to meet me. So wow. she was in Canada just to meet me. And she was staying in the room. She was sharing a room with someone who absolutely hated me. So that was like, she was like, I don't understand. The girl is so negative. She's bitching about everything. She's such a whiner. How can you like her? And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. But, uh, but it's so funny because two, two people have two such extreme reactions yeah. to yeah. the same person. And that's fine. Like, no, not everybody's going to like you. And I think that that's one of the things we have to get over, right? When you're putting yourself out there, it's just one of those mindset switch. And I think it's what holds a lot of people back is, but what if people don't like me? They will. There's, they there are not like you. <laughs> yeah, there is a group of people that won't like you because, you know, some people like strawberries, some people like vanilla, some people like chocolate. It's just the way it is. So, yeah, you know, but, like, but, but, you know, not just like you, there will be some people who will absolutely crush your soul with yeah. the, I don't know whether you get those emails, but I get a lot of those. Girl, emails. you need an assist. Like I've got to get you on board with this. Like, well, the thing is, I, I most of the time I don't see them because you know I'm not the first person to see my my email. Wow. So, uh, so but every once in a while when I've had to like figure out why is this you know this tech issue not working or whatever, I've come across one. But usually it'll be like six months later, and I'll be like, oh, that came in in July, <laughs> and it's kind of hysterical. Um, but yeah, yeah, we 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 definitely get them for sure, for sure. I just don't usually see them too often unless it's I like. I always see them and I read them whenever I'm PMSing and I want to torture myself further. I go to this folder called hate mail and I read all the emails over and over again and then tell me how shitty I am. So oh, you're a masochist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I love doing that. Mm. So Bushra, you're, you're very modest about your results and, you know, all of that. But I want, I want my people to know kind of, you know, why is it that you, you know, put out programs like a sold out launch? I mean, is it fair to say that you, you mean, you consistently, when I see you putting stuff out there, you, it feels like you're consistently doing six figure launches almost effortlessly from what I can see. Is that um, an accurate uh, description? Is that what, no, I, what I'm seeing? Okay. So, okay. So no, not, not consistent six figure launches at all. Okay. The, I've only had two six-figure launches. Um, the first one was because it was the first time I launched a premium product, right? But I, I built up to that. So mm-hmm. my first product was 47. My second was 49. Then I lost confidence because I don't have a lot of confidence in myself. So I scaled back. I went back to a $7 launch. Uh, PH Lab when I launched it was seven dollar. Then I scaled up to two ninety seven. From there I went to four ninety seven. So the first time I launched my four ninety seven dollar product, and I want to kind of emphasize that, that when people say effortless, yeah, the first time I launched my four ninety nine dollar product that was the first six figure launch, and I was like, oh my god, this is like the best thing ever. This is gonna sell out. And it did not sell out. Mm. It sold a few things, but because I was expecting to make 100K from that launch and because it was the first time I launched something that was that high value, it did not, it did not sell out initially. So what I ended up doing was I had already done three series, uh, three, and, and that was basically the first time I did the, the Jeff Walker style three-part video, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I did that kind of launch and everyone was saying, oh my God, that's the best thing to do. And I did, and I didn't sell a lot. And then I was like, okay, what do I do? Um, so midway through the launch, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do another series of live webinars. And I killed myself. I did five days of live webinars because I wanted to get to that number. And I think in retrospect, that was a really stupid thing. Because what I did with that was not only did I, I, I depleted my goodwill account a little bit with that launch. That's my opinion. Because when you jump from 297 to 499, you can't expect people to buy right off the bat, right? You have trained them to pay you small amounts of money. So if you go directly to 499 and they don't buy, and then you do six webinars and then you do 20 emails, you're basically literally going, you know, 
completely opposite to what you stand for, right? Not only are you selling something that's more expensive, you're also doing all sorts of crazy launch gymnastics. So that was kind of a wake up call for me in the sense that even though I made that six figure, it was not a happy, it was not a happy hundred K, you know, some, some, yeah. some, some amounts are like, Oh my God. So your first sale or the first time I had sold out launch only $7, I sold 400 and I was ecstatic. So that hundred K was not effortless and it was not happy. It was not a happy, delightful hundred K. So no, I don't think it is effortless. Yeah. Uh, the only reason it seems effortless is because I have an attitude of playfulness around yeah. the same, around the whole thing. But yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that because yeah, I mean, from, from this end, it looks, you know, it just looks so easy, but you know, of course, behind the scenes, you know, there's a lot of work involved. There's a lot of late nights and. And, and I think the more, the bigger issue is, can we curse on the, this? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So you, I think they've the been warned thing. now. <laughs> Okay, so I think the bigger issue really is not the work as such. The bigger issue is the mindfuck. Mm -hmm. Because we, at least I, associate all my talent, all my, you know, everything. I just peg it to the launch. Yeah. And if it doesn't do, do well, I begin yeah. to question everything. And that is so much more poisonous than the 100%. late nights. Yeah, you tie your so, self-worth to this product, whatever yes, product du yes. jour, you everything know. Is, is pegged. Everything yeah. is pegged to this launch number. So so that part I think is that 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 mind puck is a bigger issue than just the late nights. You know, that that stress, uh, that anxiety that, you know, so so I think that's the bigger issue. And if anyone tells you it's and and again, you know, I could have a team of two hundred people, it would still be because they can yeah. take away the work, but they yeah. cannot take away the anxiety. No one can take away the anxiety because you know that's your own that's the one that you sleep with every single night. So Yeah, you know? you're the one on the line. It's it's you that's tied to it and, and you're the only one that is tying yourself forth you know the designer doesn't care <laughs> the thing didn't sell out um you know their, their self-worth is not tied to it or whatever and of course you know we shouldn't be tying our self-worth to these things but that's just you know sharing the the real the real deal of what happens behind yeah. things for yeah. sure yeah. some of the mindset yeah. work which i like that you talk about that you talk a little bit about money mindset in your in your podcast and when you're talking about overcoming objections you're talking about these things of like a lot of us grew up in households where we were told you know money doesn't grow on trees and all of these things so those are all important things that we go through and that our you know our customers that are reading our sales pages are also going through so i really appreciate that so bushra if people want to find out a little bit more about you or maybe um tune into your podcast or, or see what it is that you have currently available to uh, help them with, where can they, where can they find you? Um, so I Is don't have nice anything place? for sale right now. Awesome. But, um, but the persuasion hacks lab uh, opens every month, every other month, if I remember to open it, uh, <laughs> it's persuasion hacks lab.com. Um, the podcast is the persuasion show.com, but I would just say, just come to the group because that's really where the fun happens. So I have a free Facebook group. It's called 60 second persuasion. Uh, I don't normally sell. I do a lot of crazy Facebook lives. So I think that it's going to be a lot of fun. If Maybe. your people are opposed to cursing that. Yeah, exactly. Well, if they've listened this far, then they probably aren't. So awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being so real, for sharing so much. And, you know, not just, uh, not just tips that we can implement right away, but also behind the scenes a little bit and sharing, you know, what it is that, that you go through on your end. So thank you so much for, for being here, Bushra. And we'll put all those links for you guys below. You can find first, uh, The Persuasion Show on iTunes and thepersuasionrevolution.com. And we'll put that right below so you can find Bushra. Thanks so much for thank being here, Bushra. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Glad we did it finally. All right. Yes. Bye. Bye.